know, back in the 70s when, and I used the example several times about buying wine, you you need to be educated. You have to have right, the, exactly. you know, wine connoisseur magazine mm -hmm. comes out mm -hmm. and says, okay, well, this Bordeaux is mm -hmm. really good compared to this other one, mm -hmm. and, and that's why you, you know, spend the money for it. Mm -hmm. And now we don't have that. We just right. have galleries, you know, pushing whoever they happen to have in the gallery, whoever yeah. happens to sell, and it's all, the engine behind it is the gallery selling, so therefore, that's mm -hmm. who they push. But mm -hmm. wouldn't it be great if the galleries would buy the work from the artist directly, own it, wouldn't and then turn around nice. and sell it? Wouldn't that be great? I mean, wouldn't there be an incentive for them to sell it more so instead of stacking it in the background? In the 19th century, Lou Peel sat on yeah. the doorstep of Mariano Fortuny, uh -huh. went to Rome, waited for him to finish the paintings, bundled them up, took them back, paid him cash for the paintings, mm -hmm. went back, and sold them for whatever you could get. Well, isn't that like any other product? I mean, if somebody yeah, exactly. makes a sauce, you don't give the sauce out on consignment, and then when you sell it, you get 50%. It's like some company likes the sauce, they buy the sauce, and they put it in their store and sell it. I think we can, we can turn things around, because literally, I mean, the galleries are, are, are useless without us. I mean, they right. don't have anything to sell. So if we actually you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> decided that mm -hmm. we would sell our work um, at, a, at a reasonable price to the gallery mm -hmm. and will allow them to then turn around and sell it for whatever they can mm -hmm. get for it. The public would know, you know mm -hmm. that that's, that's what's working, that's mm -hmm. what's, what's happening, and um, they could appreciate the, the gallery's commitment to the artist. Mm -hmm. And so they know the gallery believes in you because they, they've got their hardcore core money tied right. in the gallery. Right. So anyway, so being, you know, keeping, for me, keeping the tradition intact Mm -hmm. has always been a really, really high, uh, in, of high importance in my life. Right. Uh, that I feel, um, you know, would you want to go in and tweak uh, the tradition of, of, of opera or classical mm -hmm. music? Yes, of course, there's going to be kind of the modern tonal, mm -hmm. tonal uh, classical music. Um, it's still under the heading of classical music, but it doesn't really answer the same questions as traditional classical music. And I think that is where uh, I, I th everybody should be free to do whatever they want to do. Mm -hmm. and, but I think um, making it clear uh, what your intentions are mm -hmm. and what you're trying to do is a big part of being happy with everyone else. Like if you're going to work from photographs, great, you know, just say you do it. And then, you know, um, if you're mm -hmm. not part of the tradition, call yourself a realist but not a classical realist or a traditional realist mm. whatever terminology suits your mm. but let's just be clear about it and know what the differences are I think you know helping mm -hmm. um, the general public understanding as artists we have trouble distinguishing all these different types of mm -hmm. uh, realism um, and I think for our uh, for the public the people uh, that are interested in uh, this movement, interested in collecting, uh, they need to be better informed. Absolutely, because by informing them, then they're able to make their own decisions. Exactly. And that's that's what we're coming down to, because everything's all opened up now. We can see what everybody's doing. We're not isolated anymore, and collectors are seeing the same thing. They don't have to just listen to what the gallerist is telling them is good. They can, they're educated people. They can look at it and decide for themselves what they like. Brandon, what you're doing is, um, you know, getting the word out. And I think, you know, it's a wonderful mm. uh, uh effort on your part mm. to not only devote time and energy to, to doing this, but I think it's it's so needed. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, having a, a magazine or uh, a website where right. people can go and, and to, to look at um, what's being done. So few people are talking about um, the real emotional connection with their work mm -hmm. and the love of making things mm -hmm. and uh, these heartfelt uh, the heartfelt aspect of, of of what it takes to create a work of art